and welcome back again. So today with me is the E3110. So this is the essential true wireless earphones made by Vishko. This is belonging to the E series. So you know that this is the entry level series. Now, the E3110 replaces the E3101 and the E3102. And I've reviewed the E3101 previously. And this is one of the uh, very good affordable earbuds made by uh, Vishko with Nokia branding on it. So we're going to talk a bit about how both of them um, have some similarities and some differences. Uh, before that, we just have to look at what the E3110 has to offer. So this is the E3110's packaging, a simple, straightforward packaging, nothing fancy like the P3600, and that obviously belongs to a different class altogether. Now you can see here it has an up to 16 hours of listening time, and uh, it supports Bluetooth 5.1, uh, supposedly to be lightweight, has a comfortable fit, and IP44 weatherproof. Now over the back, you can see it supports Bluetooth 5.1, which is supposed to guarantee unparalleled connectivity quality up to 10 meters. The charging case holds a 300 milliampere battery. Each of the uh, charging, sorry, it is actually 30 milliampere for the earbuds, 250 milliampere for the charging case. Now, each of the earbuds allows you to listen up to uh, 4 hours of use and a total playtime of up to 16 hours. Now the charging time is about 1.5 hours to fully charge the charging case and it weighs at only 34 grams. So simple packaging, a lot of information over the back. Now with that said, let's just do a uh, quick and simple unboxing here, nothing much to share. So, as you can see, this is plasticky all inside. Uh, now, the surprising thing is that this earbud actually costs USD 13. So, that is one three, and that includes shipping all the way from China. So, it is very cheap, and I'm also quite impressed with what they have managed to pull through at this time. So, I'm just going to take the charging case out. You can see how beautiful it looks like here. And I'm also going to place the earbuds themselves out here for now. Now, at the back, you have this, uh, some warranty information, some um, manual, and also a USB-C charging cable. So this is a USB-C enabled charging case. So uh, well, let's have a look at the charging case themselves. Now the E3101, which is black here, is matte in finishing, has four LED indicators. You can see a lot of scarf that it has below over the time, and it has a USB-C charging port over the bottom. Now, the uh, E3110 here, you can see how glossy it is. This is the white color, looks pretty fantastic here. Uh, a single LED indicator as opposed to the four in the E3101. You can see it has this very beautiful uh, hinge at the back and a USB-C charging port at the bottom. And this is definitely feels more sturdier than the E3101. Both are actually quite good, but I just feel that in the hands, the Nokia E3110 feels much better because probably because of the matte, uh, glossy finishing that it has. Now you can see that it only has a single LED indicator here as opposed to 4 on the E3101. So, uh, Richgo has done some clever uh, implementation of how the LED actually tells you more information with just a single LED. Now, you can see that uh, at the moment it's not blinking, but once I actually uh, put the earbuds in, it shows white. Now, a constant non-blinking white indicator means that uh, the earbuds themselves are fully uh, charged. So, Let's say the charging case is running out of juice, it will show an amber color which will start to blink. Now, when that happens, you simply just need to connect to your USB-C charging cable as I would demonstrate here. And you will see that uh, it will change to a green indicator which is blinking, which means that the case is being charged. Now, once the charge is complete, you'll have a stable uh, green indicator here, which doesn't blink, which means that it is being fully charged. So a clever implementation with a single LED here. And uh, the earbuds themselves, you can see how different they look like. Now, to me, this looks like a major upgrade in terms of the outlook, especially for an entry-level earbuds, which is pretty good. Uh, good things doesn't necessarily need to be expensive, and uh, Richco is actually just demonstrating it very well here. You can see how the earbuds themselves look very similar to the E3511 series, which is my absolute favorite. And this is my my companion at the moment, especially when I'm working out. And you can see in terms of design, both of them look pretty much the same, except that the E3511 has this uh, silicone tip, which actually goes into the air canal, blocks a lot of the sound passively, giving you a much better listening experience. So this is some of the trade-off 
for an entry level uh, earbud because the E3511 uh, costs at least four times more than the E3110 here. Now, despite all that, uh, the outlook of them both look the same. Uh, they've got both the same type of finishing, the glossy white finishing here, which is absolutely beautiful if you ask me. Now, compared to the E3111 here, you can see how different they are. So instead of this uh, uh, more squarish design over the stem here, you've got a more cylindrical ones on the E3110. And you can see that uh, both of them actually house uh, an LED indicator, which blinks, uh, which means they are trying to pair with nearby devices. Now, one advantage that the E3110 has over the E3101 here is that each of the earbuds now has a single microphone, so a total of two microphones, which allows the E3110 here to have uh, environmental noise cancelling features, which is absent on the E3101. So other than this trade off, uh, the E3110 uh, actually has a much shorter playtime compared to the E3101. So up to 16 hours on the E3110 and up to 20 hours on the E3101. Uh, in terms of weight, the E3101 is very has some very minute um, change in the weight is slightly lesser compared to the E3101. So uh, you can read more about the details that uh, I've published in the Nokia Power User Site to better, better understand the uh, differences and similarities. Now, how is the usage experience all together? Now, as stated, this comes with Bluetooth 5.1 and in my personal opinion, in my usage experience, the Bluetooth 5 series X actually are pretty good in general. They offer stable connectivity up to 10 meters. Uh, if you don't have any solid uh, interference in between, you could actually pretty much walk away from the devices connected to and have good listening experience uh, still. Now, in terms of uh, um, probably the microphones, the addition of two microphones give you better clarity, especially when you uh, have conversation via the earbuds, as uh, this offers uh, environmental noise cancelling. So, at least two microphones is required to cancel any unwanted uh, sound and this is uh, available on the E3110 here. And I honestly feel that there are a lot of uh, aesthetic changes on the E3110 uh, with a much lesser price point compared to the E3101 which was actually slightly pricier when it was initially launched. And to justify the purchase of the E3110, this is especially quite good if you're looking for an entry level device or a spare year but uh, for for that matter or simply for a gift for your kids and this would definitely stand the test of time at the same time giving them excellent uh, build quality along with good listening uh, quality in terms of audio quality so do not expect the quality to be anywhere uh, in the area of uh, e35 series because the e35 series is definitely much higher compared to the e3110 uh, that doesn't mean that this uh, earbud sounds bad. They actually sound quite decent. You don't have any distortion at loud volume. It's just that you don't have the variation in the depth of the music. So music turns out pretty flat here. This is true even for the E3110. So this is a certain trade-off to keep the price point low. You do have clear uh, audio. You have uh, audio that doesn't break, but the depth is what makes the difference here. So lack of bass, lack of uh, depth in the music. But Pretty acceptable for just USD $13 altogether. And another fancy thing about here is that if you were to see on the E3110, sorry, the E3101 here, you can see this slight elevation uh, which houses the uh, touch input. And on the E3110 here, there is no such elevation. Instead, you have it flushed just above the Nokia branding. So this is where the touch sensor is and the touch sensor is very responsive once you get to know where exactly to touch it. So pretty much for USD $13, the E3110 is definitely a major upgrade in terms of the loops themselves. So this is certainly an elevation in terms of the aesthetic part of the device where a cheap device does not necessarily need to look cheap, but instead they can look premium. And for the price point of USD 30, this certainly hits all the right notes. So with that said, what do you think about the E3110? Have you ever tried something similar to this or do you plan to buy one? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Till then, have a good day. I hope all of you stay safe and see you in my next video.